Hi, my name's Matt Widgery from mattwidgery.com. In today's episode, we're going to be having a look at flashes for the Fuji X series of cameras, such as this X Pro One here. Uh, it will probably, I guess, work the same systems with your X-T1, X-E1, X-E2, whatever it is that you happen to have. Um, although there may well be slight variants between these different models, and so you will have to have a bit of a suck and see. This is purely from my experience of the things that I've been using, and I wanted to run through uh, what the setups that I've tried with this camera Camera, the successes that I've had and also the failures in the hope that you may be able to learn something from my mistakes as well as from the things that um, have actually sort of figured out pretty well for me. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is actually something that was a disaster for me and I was a bit surprised by it because I thought this would actually be a very reliable um, way of, of triggering the uh, flashes off camera. Um, these are the uh, Yongnuo 603, RF 603 units. Um, I've used them and they're as regular as, uh, as a, a Swiss railway with the Nikon cameras that I use. You simply plug one of these units onto the hot show and you plug another one onto the bottom of your speed light and um, that talks to that and then that will fire the flash. Everything's of course all in manual with these, uh, but you know, I'm really using these for, for studio type work and so I want that manual control anyway. Uh, but you know, this is a Nikon SB900, it, it sits on, on the back of there. Um, and if you've got a, a third party sort of um, flash that, that's not made by Yongnuo, uh, you, you simply bolt one of these on the bottom. If you are using one of these, this is a Yongnuo, uh, what are we, YN563, these have actually got a a receiver built into them so you don't need two of these units you only need one that sits on the hot shoe of the camera uh, and then actually built into this bottom part here is a, is a radio receiver and that will receive the, the trigger so you don't actually have to have one of these on the bottom um, so on the Nikons they work brilliantly uh, they are a thunderous disaster on the X Pro one they just don't work I mean I've had some success with making the thing switch on but really very little. What I discovered today is that you can't get anything through pressing the trigger, although if you press the, the test button on the top there, you can, you can get them to work. I'll just switch all these off at the moment because we've got these being all fired optically at the moment. But uh, yeah, there we go. So that, that fires um, by pressing the button there, which is useless because it doesn't, doesn't fire when you, when you do that. And you kind of need to fiddle around with it, you know, on the hot shift. You plug it all the way in, it doesn't do either of those things. And, you know, it's basically, it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. I've, I've tried these. This is the, the Nikon version. They do a 603C, which is a Canon version, and a 603N, which is a Nikon version. Neither of them are worth a hill of beans with the uh, Fuji system. So I would immediately, um, <laughs> trigger Zen as you slide it off, that's helpful. Uh, I would immediately, uh, if you've got these, save them for your DSLRs. They are useless with the Fuji systems. So I shall junk that for the time being. Um, right, now, um, what I've actually had in the studio, at any rate, the most success with using is actually optical, um, optically triggering the flashes. Um, so rather than having a radio frequency, you're actually using a speed light to, um, to control other speed lights. Um, so all you do is you mount the, um, the first speed light on the top of the camera, like that and you switch it on. Uh, you switch it into manual mode and put it into a, a sort of low power setting. You know, these uh, SB900s go down to like 128th power, uh, which is normally all right. Just, you know, th th these are white walls here. And so what I tend to do is uh, have, the, um, have, have the, the, the head facing upwards so that there's no exposure uh, it's not an exposure making flash when it goes off as, as that fires it's not going to fire into the picture it's, it's going to fire you know up into the ceiling uh, like that um, and then what I do with the uh, with, with the, the, the young Nuos here uh, I'll just turn this around and I'll put this um, from being in the radio um, mode uh, in, into receiver mode I'll actually put this into just a slave mode um, and then uh, what we should hopefully find is that that will uh, that that it firing up into the ceiling and just bouncing down a little bit of a light is enough to trigger that one optically um, and I've found that in the studio where I can really control the position of the lights and make sure that there's always either good line of sight or in here where I've got white walls and white ceilings I can normally find an optical path to get to the unit that I want to fire um, and it works just as well on these as it does with the big studio heads so if we switch that one on there uh, hopefully you can see that that one is firing as well not every flash fires in a video I appreciate that so um, do, I'll do a few so that you can see them hopefully you'll see those um, you know both firing um, and that's nice it means you can have as many uh, either studio heads or small speed lights 
dotted around, um, you know, so you can have kickers and headlights and fills and mains, uh, as many as you want, and um, and have them all, you know, sort of firing at their own powers. You can dial down, you know, up and down the power, you know, manually as, as you want to go. Um, and I found that very successful. Um, now, the other thing that you can do if you are in a studio where, again, you've got a bit more control, um, it, this, is, this is old school, but, you know, there's a lot to be said for old school um, because it works. Um, so this here... This is um, this is a PC sync cord, and um, if I don't drop it on the floor at any rate, um, all you do um, is you plug the uh, you plug one end into the um, into the side of the camera there, and the other end plugs into the back of the um, plugs into the back of the light. Um, if you've got a the SB 900s, they've got a PC sync cord on the on there as well, so you can mount those separately. Something to be said about the Yong Nuos, they don't have PC sync um, cords. In, on them, but I'll come on to why that doesn't matter now. So, so long as you've got one of these plugged in and switch it off slave mode and into just regular mode now. Uh, now when you fire the, uh, the camera, and we'll switch everything off, we'll switch that off the top of there as well because that's firing that. So everything else is off now. Well, actually, no, it's not. We'll turn that off. So now the only thing that's going to be firing is, is the studio strobe. That's just, um, you know, on a, on, a, on a cable that's being fired straight into there. Um, so if, for example, you've got lights that can't be seen, that, that you can't reach this, this cable to, and you don't want, obviously, the cords being daisy-chained amongst everything else, so long as you've got one of these lights set up that can see the rest, you can then set the rest up in, um, in, in slave mode. So if we switch this back on um, and, uh, and leave it in slave mode, instead of it now being fired by the one off on the top of the camera, this is actually, well, take it off, this is, this is now no longer uh, part of anything at all, uh, but that one is being fired by that one optically um, and of course you know we can switch this one onto remote as well uh, if we want this somewhere else in the room uh, we can you know we can have that on there as well so you can have as many of these wired up and, and as long as you've got a cable that, that will fit to one of them so for example you know in a studio situation you might not have the camera a million miles away from your main light it might be off at perhaps 45 degrees or something um, and, and sort of you know within uh, reach of one of these cables where you're not going to fall over it you can trigger it like that um, of course, the next thing that I will be looking at getting, uh, depending on uh, you know what f funds allow, um, you know either the Pocket Wizards or um, I may just try one of these Yong Nuo TX systems. Um, the TX system is rather rather neat. Um, what you get with that, um, the the back of the the TX unit looks a little bit like the back of one of these speed lights, these um, 563s, um, and you've got a, a display on the back of the TX uh, commander that sits on top of the uh, on top of the hot shoe, and it looks just like that it just doesn't have a flash head on it um, and you've got a screen on there and you can actually control depending on how many of these they have to be at the moment the YN563 units or above I think there's a YN564 now uh, but either of those you can control the, the the individual power up and down of those lights on four different um, four different groups 16 excuse me 16 different channels um, all from the unit there, which is really nice if you've got things set up all around the room. Um, that would be particularly useful, for example, if you're doing something like weddings where you might have lights up in the dance floor. Say you've got uh, four lights uh, down on the dance floor or uh, you know, three, four lights up, you know, on, on the dance floor. And you want um, to have the one that's kind of nearest the axis of your camera switched off. So it doesn't look like on camera flash, uh, but you want to just switch on one, maybe as a, a you know, that, that's going to be coming in as a, as a main light from just off camera um, to give you a bit more shape in, in the light. And then having the one that's kind of, you know, behind people to go off as a, uh, as a kicker, um, you can, you can control independently. So you can have the kicker going off a, a bit, uh, a bit softer and the, um, the, the main coming in, um, a, a little bit brighter um, you can maybe add the third one in as a fill and control the uh, control of the power of that separately um, you know all from the one unit um, so that's really really nice and it saves you having to have assistance there that are climbing up and down light stands and things like that at a wedding when that might not be so easy to do um, so that is basically uh, my experiences to date with having off-camera flash as I say there are ways around it but if you take nothing else from this video uh, away with you uh, please take to heart that if you've got the urge to go and buy the 603 triggers for your Fuji certainly the X-Pro1 just doesn't bloody work so uh, not reliably anyway sometimes it comes on sometimes it doesn't I've heard of people taping up some of the pins so you just got the center pin going I did have a go at that but then I found that the hot shoe was very very tight 
uh, when you plug the the, um, the the speed light into it, and I was afraid of actually damaging that hot shoe connection and having it pull off, so I didn't want to get involved with that. Um, so that's it. So don't put those on there, but do certainly try putting a speed light on the top of the camera. Um, absolutely, have a go with the PC sync cords. Um, these uh, these studio heads did come with their own um, radio trigger system, which um, did seem to work all right. Actually, um, they they killed their batteries very very fast, and they use these little tiny um, um, high voltage batteries in the um, in, in the the commander unit, the, the transmitter unit that sits on top of there. Um, so um, just be aware if you are going to use those particular ones, it's not just a standard AA battery. It's a very tiny little battery. Um, just buy a stack of those if you are going to use them. And also, I did find the build quality very, very fragile with those, and I wasn't entirely convinced about how long they were going to last. It has to be said with the 603s. Um, you know, I've had those now for. Oh, you know, quite a few months, and I've used them pretty hard. And 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 on the Nikon systems, they, they work really well, and they don't seem to break too much, um, and they're cheap enough to replace, and so on. Uh, but with the ones that came with these, I did think they were a little bit more fragile. So that's it. That's all I've got to say for the time being on flashes. But please leave your comments below about your experience with off-camera flash using the Fuji X series cameras. And as always, subscribe on the button, the big red button that you see on screen. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers. <laughs>